Galen awoke to his hair tickling his eyes. He was sore all over. His ribs felt particularly bad. A breeze passed over, convincing him to open his eyes. Grey skies were mottled with bursts of orange and pink. He could hear the sound of small waves lapping the shore. The flickering of a campfire was to his left. Turning his head, he saw Inigo watching him. I was beginning to think you wouldn't wake up tonight, he said, rolling a log on the fire. How do you feel? Galen tried to sit up, grunting before flopping back down to the ground. I think I'd feel better if Molag Bal were to have his way with me. You stink now, the cat wrinkled his nose. You smelled this way after that one in White Run, too. How we're by the lake now. I had to carry you. Gale then tried once more to sit upright. He let out a huff, finally giving up completely. I may have dropped you a few times. I thought you'd feel better once you relaxed by the water. Very kind of you. The elf laid his hands on his stomach. The horses? They're fine. I tied them up a little further up the shore by a creek. He stared into the fire. At least they were smart enough to run away. Galen looked jilted. I'm not smart? You drove off a fire-breathing dragon, then proceeded to run after it. Yes, but... Inigo interrupted him. You've been avoiding this power. We've been told to go to the Greybeards. Balgroove spoke himself about how they could help you, even called it a gift. From what I see, it's a curse. Why don't you go to them? Galen stayed silent for a moment. I don't know. I'm not really sold on the idea of going to a strange mountaintop cult, firstly. And even if we go... He paused. I don't have much coin. What if it costs something to consult these sages? I can't just go. Inigo snarled, an act that startled his companion. You're a fool! Now is not the time to think of your financial integrity. Dragons are burning the holds, and on a more personal level, you've nearly died twice already because of them. After you killed them. I can't let them live and threaten the people to save myself, Galen retorted. I know. But if you think I'm going to stand by and watch someone else in my life get killed, you're wrong. The elf picked up his head, unsure how to respond. Who did you lose? The Gajit picked at the laces of his boots. My brother, Fergus. The clouds began to close in the fire becoming more and more essential to them. He was killed many years ago, when we were traveling through County Skingrad in Cyrodiil. Some racist Nords pinned us for a string of thefts in their city. I haven't mentioned him before? No, I had no idea you even had a sibling. Galen felt a pang of shame at this. Inigo had traveled with him for over a year, and he'd never asked about his family. Inigo must have seen his face. Don't look so distraught. I never asked about your relatives either. I kind of thought to wait on those things until you decided you wanted to speak. In any case, I think you need to put your health as a priority here. If you insist on being a hero, try to live long enough to do the most good. Galen stayed silent. His friend wasn't wrong. He had been reckless. He may not want to admit it, but these greybeards were really his only option. What about the missing people in Markarth? Inigo shrugged. We can be in Iverstead in a day, and then, once we hear what the old men have to say, we'll ride like the wind to get there. The trees were silent. The trunks made the darkness feel even closer than normal as Galen and Inigo walked through them. They had handed their steeds off to Feindal. After exchanging some furs and accepting provisions, they convinced him to take the horses to Riverwood for some rest. Inigo kicked a stone, still seeming to regret the choice. I miss Beast. She'll be fine. Feindal will treat them well. He watched Beast when we were staying at the Sleeping Giant. Galen looked back at him with a smirk. You're just cranky because you have to walk. The Khajiit huffed to himself. Just as the sound escaped him, a few drops of rain fell through the branches. He threw up his hood, mood improving slightly. The rain smells invigorating. His stomach growled. What do we have for food? I'm hungry. You'll have to wait, the elf replied. We only have enough to make it to Iverstead if we try and ration the supplies. But I'm hungry now. Galen crossed his arms, cocking an eyebrow at his companion. Are you really going to make a fuss? 
you'll be more hungry about the time we get through the pass and run out of food. Inigo exercised his cat-like features, giving the worst pout the Bosmer had seen in years. Please, just a cheese wedge? Cahillon felt an involuntary twinge in his heart. He sighed, reaching into his knapsack. As soon as Inigo accepted it, the pair heard the snapping of branches in the trees. They crouched, drawing their bows. Amid the pines wandered an elk, grazing without care. Before the creature took notice, Kaolin released his shot, deftly skewering the eye. Drawing his trusty trench knife, he began to skin their kill. On second thought, maybe we should make camp and have some early lunch. Elk stew? <laughs> because I would ever say no. Inigo rushed off, looking for shelter as his friend worked. A few hours later, they sat around a crackling fire. They had built it back into a crag, keeping the rain off their backs as they cooked. The last of the meat on the fire, Gaolin laid out his bedroll to sit on. Inigo laughed at him. What's so funny? You look like you're trying to be an assassin in that hood. He turned the spit. So, which way do we go from here? Gaolin thought for a while. Though I don't really like the idea, the fastest way would be to go through Helgen. The very thought made him shiver. There couldn't be anything left but ruins. How long had it been? Were there still bodies? What are our other options? Inigo looked at their map. The only other way would be to head to Riverwood, then around past Darkwater Crossing, coming down and up to the rift from the northeast. The elf shook his head. That would take too long. We should be as direct as possible. Besides, the only thing that will be there is ash. They fell quiet, even the rain stopping. Unnerved by the stillness, they packed up, setting off once again. Galen loosened his bow. If he needed it, he wanted to be quick on the draw. The road began to slope upward, light snow beginning to overtake the brush. The eerie quiet still gripped them. The air grew colder, though even it was stagnant. Inigo was about to suggest they take the long way when he heard the sound of a scuffle. Galen motioned him to crouch. The two sneaked up, seeing the broken battlements of Helgen Keep looming ominously above them. Galen couldn't see the commotion, but listened to the argument being cast between two bandits. The stone wall was as cold as ice on his back. Still, he dared not move. Listen here, a man sneered. I stole that sword, fair and square, it's mine. A woman responded, the sound of the sword in question being drawn, unmistakable. You think you can take it from me, Falgnar? Come on and try. Falgnar apparently had no intention to argue further. That's what I thought. Now go check the gate. So far Sidgir has ignored Helgen, but he may send men to try and reclaim it. We don't want that now, do we? I like the idea of having my own city. Her footsteps betrayed her heavy armor, likely a standard steel chest piece and boots. The elf and cat stiffened as the shamed bandit approached their hiding place. He came out of the arch that once housed the great doors to the city, passing them by mere inches. As the highwayman gazed out across the ocean of evergreens, Galen snuck behind him. He stood without a sound, quickly wrapping one hand around his mouth. The man barely managed to muffled scream when his trench knife eased through his underarm, puncturing the heart with a sudden burst of blood. The struggle ended, the body going slack. Galen eased the corpse to the ground softly. Quietly they crept into the walls, bows drawn and ready. The female bandit emerged from a burned-out house just before they could find cover. At first, she seemed surprised. She then cracked a wicked grin. Well, well, looks like I'll get to try this out today after all. She drew the sword, the metallic singing echoing off the stones. Inigo responded in kind, the midnight-toned blade held in a defensive posture. Galen rolled to the side as they ran at each other, readying an arrow. The Khajiit parried her blows, dancing lightly on his feet. She laughed, twirling the blade around as Galen made his first shot. Miraculously, she had knocked the projectile away with the motion. The wood elf froze in awe. You boys will have to try harder than that. She rushed at Inigo, missing his side by a hair's breadth. The cat countered, bashing into her with his shoulder. 
he immediately cursed this action, as it did him far more harm than their foe. Galen fired once more, the head casting sparks off of her pauldron as it ricocheted. After this attempt, he threw down his bow, running toward the aggressor with no more than the knife on his belt. He dodged her attack, driving the short blade into the void in her armor and through her chin. The shining sword fell from her grasp, the hand instead coming up to clutch her hemorrhaging jugular. Collapsing to her knees, she watched the Bosmer as he picked up the blade. He tested it, swinging it around in a few flurries. Satisfied, he looked her in the eye. I know just what the sword was meant for. And with that, he swung, her head rolling to the pavement. Inigo sheathed his sword. Maybe a bit too theatrical? He smiled. Don't forget the scabbard. He looked around as Galen fastened the weapon to his belt. So you were here when all this happened? Galen looked up, nodding. Yeah. This house here used to belong to Toral. He looked at the pile of rubble. I escaped through here from that tower, met up with Hadvar over there. Inigo stooped low, grabbing a bit of scorched metal that had once been a cup. To think that so many burned here. The elf didn't respond, instead walking through the house. Come, we need to get as much distance in as we can. Inigo placed the cup on what was left of the table. Before he followed, an ear fell back against his head. The sight of a child's doll in the corner too much for him to bear. The friends made their way out of the gates, following the sign on the road to Iverstead. <laughs>